Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in unit four, contextual applications of differentiation. And today's topic is 4.5, which is solving related rates problems. Enjoy today's notes. All right, welcome to 4.5, solving related rates. In the last section, 4.4, we had an introduction to related rates, which was all about how you set up these problems. Today, we're focusing on how you solve them. When they have actual numbers, um, how do you go about doing them? Again, uh, it would be really useful uh, for you if you have not brushed up on implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation. to go back and watch the video from section 3.2. That is really important for the 4.4 and 4.5 lessons uh, that we're having last lesson in this one here. So let's get into it for today. So uh, these types of problems, these related rates problems sort of come down to two different types of problems that we've got. One, where they give us some sort of arbitrary equation and they give us some rates and they say, you know, let's let's try to actually find a particular uh, value that we've got here. Other ones, like we see later here, where they give you a scenario and you need to, you know, maybe draw a picture and, and figure things out in that case where you have to find the equation and set up the equation yourself. Um, I would say these, like number one, where they give you the equation are probably more frequent on the AP exam. They sometimes show up on the multiple choice. They sometimes show up on the free response. Uh, but these are definitely ones we want to make sure that we know. These are a little bit less more common, uh, less common, not less more common, less common in the... Uh, in the, say the free response section, but they do come up from time to time. All right, so what do we got? If y squared is equal to three x to the fourth plus six x, find dy dt when x is one, dx dt is two. All right, so first off, I noticed they're asking us to find dy dt. That's the change in y with respect to time. That means because this is a t here, I'm gonna to need to take the derivative of this equation, the whole equation with respect to time, the derivative with respect to time of that y squared is equal to three x to the fourth plus six x. Now, since that time variable does not match the x's and y's, I'm gonna end up with these extra rates in this problem. The derivative of y squared is two y, and since that y and t don't match, we end up with a dy dt when we take that derivative. The derivative of 3x to the fourth is going to be 12x cubed using the power rule. And since the x and the t are not the same variable, we end up with a dx dt. And then the derivative of 6x is 6. Uh, but again, the x does not match, so we end up with this dx dt for this particular problem. Now, what are we trying to find? Well, they want us to find dy dt. So we're trying to get this dy dt that we've got right here, which means that if I've got the rest of these variables, that I can actually you know, find that dy dt. They gave me x is one. So everywhere I've got an x, I'll be able to plug in that one. And they actually told me dx dt, the rate of change of x with respect to time is two. So I've got both of those. The only thing that I don't have here is y. And so I need to think about, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to solve dy dt if I don't have the y. So in cases like this where I don't have enough information to plug everything in, I would go back to the original equation that they gave and try to solve for y in that way. Specifically here, we know that y squared is equal to 3 times our x, which is 1 to the 4th, plus 6 times 1 uh, for that. So again, we plugged x into this equation so that we can find out what y is. So I'll leave this over here as my side work. Um, so that means that y squared is equal to 3 plus 6. So y squared is equal to 9. Now we know that if we want to get y by itself, we take the square root of that 9. And so that would mean that y is equal to 3 or negative 3. Now, generally in these problems, they will give you some sort of context, like they might give you a coordinate that will tell you whether it should be positive or negative. For the sake of this problem, I'm going to just say we'll pick three as the one that we're going to use. Uh, but, you know, negative three could be an answer that would work for this one. Uh, but again, problems generally give some context as to which one you're going to need. Um, so let's plug in what we've got. We've got two times our y value, which was three times that dy dt, which we're trying to find, is equal to 12 times our x, which is 1, that's being cubed, times dx dt, which is 2, plus 6 times dx dt, which is 2. So I see that we've got 6 
dy dt is equal to 12 times 1 times 2, that's 24 plus 12. So if I go over here, 6 dy dt is equal to 24 plus 12, that's 36, which means that dy dt has to equal 36 divided by 6, which is 6. There are no units given in this problem, so I don't need to have that in my answer. Uh, but my answer for this problem is going to be dy dt has to equal 6 if the rest of the stuff is going to be true here. So that is number one. Now, on to problems where they don't give you the equation and they don't give you a picture. In general, these are the guidelines that I would use if I'm solving related rates problems. I would always draw a picture first. Then you're going to want to make a list of your knowns and unknowns, both the rates themselves or the quantities that they gave you. You're going to want to try to find a way to relate the variables using some sort of equation. The equation might be, you know, an area formula. It might be a volume formula. It might be something like the Pythagorean theorem. It depends on what shape you have from the picture that you drew in number one. That's sort of trying to figure out what the problem is, is these first three. Then once you've got that equation, you're going to differentiate with respect to time, and then you're going to substitute what you know in, and then solve for your unknown. Almost all of these related rates problems are going to follow these exact same steps. Now, important, substituting a non-constant quantity before differentiating is not allowed. In fact, I don't substitute anything in into these equations that we found until after I do step four. I don't do any substitution until the very end because sometimes if you substitute too early, it can cause things to cancel out that don't need to cancel out or shouldn't be canceling out. That's my uh, important note for you. All right, rectangle example. So the width of a rectangle is increasing at a rate of two centimeters per second, and its length is increasing at a rate of three centimeters per second. At what rate is the area of the rectangle increasing when its width is four centimeters and its length is five centimeters? Let's take a look at these guidelines. So draw a picture. All right, here's a rectangle. We'll assume that's that's a rectangle. It's pretty close. Okay. Um, we know in general that you know a rectangle we refer to as having a width and a length. So it's got a width and a length. You could potentially say like x and y in this problem if you were more comfortable with using x for that horizontal and y for the vertical. Same idea. So now that we've drawn the picture, check. Make a list of all knowns and unknown rates and quantities. So the width is increasing at a rate of two centimeters per second. So the width is uh, increasing. So dw dt, the width with respect to time, is two centimeters per second. And I know it's positive because they said it's increasing. Its length is increasing at a rate of three centimeters per second. So the change in the length with respect to time is positive three centimeters per second. At what rate is the area, so we're gonna need that, of the rectangle increasing when its width is four? So width is four centimeters, and its length is five centimeters. What are they, they're asking us, uh, what rate is the area increasing? So they're asking us to find dA dt, the rate of change of the area with respect to time. So we have all of these givens. They gave us four things that we know right here. And our unknown is our DADT. We don't know uh, what that is with respect to time. Um, and so uh, those are all values that we're going to want to try to find here in this case. Now, luckily for us, we know that this is a rectangle. And we know that we're talking about the area of a rectangle. And we know that the area formula is length times width to find the area of a rectangle. So we made a list of all known and unknown rates and quantities. We related the variables in an equation, right? The area is related to the length and the width. Nice. Next, we need to differentiate with respect to time. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. And so what does that give us? That gives us the dA dt, the change in area with respect to time, uh, th and then I have length times width, so this is going to be here. I'm going to actually need to use the product rule here because I have a function times a function. So that is going to be dl dt, the derivative of l times w, plus the length times the derivative of uh, the width, so dw dt. 
So D80T, and I can put these in parentheses if, if they're more comfortable, just to show you that they're all one thing. Uh, D80T is equal to DLDT times W plus L times D DWDT. All right, we again are trying to find D80T. This is what I'm trying to find in this equation. We have differentiated with respect to time. Now we're going to substitute the known quantities and rates and solve. So that dA dt is going to equal the change in length with respect to time, which we said was 3 centimeters per second, times the width, which is 4 centimeters, plus the length, which was 5 centimeters, times dW dt, which was 2 centimeters per second. Now here, we've got the 3 times the 4, so that is 12. Centimeters times centimeters is going to be centimeters squared per second, plus 5 times 2, which is 10 centimeters squared per second. And so if we add those, that is going to be 22 centimeters squared per second. And that is going to be our dA dt for this problem. So when the length and width are 5 and 4 respectively and their rates are changing at this rate, the area is increasing by 22 centimeters squared per second. This makes sense in terms of units, right? We did centimeters times centimeters to get centimeters squared, and then that seconds is in the denominator, and we add those two, they stayed the same. It makes sense because this is area with respect to time, and we know that area is normally units squared. So... So units squared with respect to time, all of our units work out. That makes a lot of sense for this problem. Great, that's our rectangle example. What about our triangle example? We're going to go back to the problem that we had from lesson 4.4, where we're talking about this police car going closer to the intersection, the speeding car is going uh, farther away. But let's see what other information they've added now. So the police car is moving towards the intersection. The speeding car is moving away from the intersection, moving east. We talked in the last lesson about making sure that we know our directions, north, south, east, and west. They come up sometimes in these problems. Uh, when the police car is 0 0.6 miles north and of the intersection, so actually let's, let's label our sides first. So we've got our picture. They gave that to us first. Let's label what we've got, our our horizontal line I'm going to call X, our vertical line we're going to call Y, I'll call the hypotenuse of this Z. So the police car is 0 0.6 miles north. So Y is 0 0.6 miles. The car that's being chased is 0 0.8 miles east. So our X is 0 0.8 miles, right? Because that distance from here to here to the speeding car is going to be 0 0.8 miles. The police determine with a radar gun that the distance between them and the car is increasing at a rate of 20 uh, miles per hour. So from the police car to the speeding car, the rate is increasing. So that they're telling us here dz dt, the rate of change of z is 20 miles per hour. If the police car is moving at 60 miles per hour, so dy dt is equal to 60 miles per hour. Uh, what is the speed of the car? So find dx dt. That's what we're trying to find. Now, one thing I'm going to mention here. The police car is moving towards the origin. It's moving towards the origin here, which means that the y is getting smaller. Since y is getting smaller, I should know that the rate of change of y needs to be negative. They don't tell me that explicitly in this problem. We need to figure that out based on the context. Is it getting larger or smaller? Since it's getting smaller, this has to, has to, has to be negative. And so I'm going to make this a negative 60 miles per hour. That is a big, big thing that comes up in these problems sometimes. You should be thinking about whether these side lengths are getting bigger or smaller to think about the signs of these. Because they gave us a speed... And really, we're also worried about it, the velocity. We care about the sign of these as well. Cool. All right, so we've done the first step and the second step. We drew a picture. We made a list of all known and unknown rates and quantities. Now we want to relate the variables in an equation. Here, again, we have a right triangle. So in this case, we're going to relate them using the Pythagorean theorem because we know that the Pythagorean theorem relates the three sides of a right triangle. And then in... The fourth one, we're going to differentiate with respect to time. So I'm going to take the derivative of this with respect to time. 
Now the derivative of this using that implicit differentiation is 2x times dx dt plus 2y times dy dt is equal to 2z times dz dt. They're asking us to find dx dt, so I want to know what that is, and I need to look and see what, what I have. I have my x, they gave that to us already. I have my y, they gave that to us already. I've got dy dt, they gave that to us. z we don't have, but dz dt we do. So here I don't have enough information to plug everything in. I don't know what z is. They didn't tell us, which means I need to go back to the original equation and find out what z is before I go any further with this. So as my side work, let's do that here in green, I'm going to do my Pythagorean theorem, and I'm going to plug in what we know, and we'll solve for z. We know that x is 0 0.8. We know that y is 0 0.6. And our z we don't know. So we've got 0 0.64 plus 0 0.36 is equal to z squared. So 1 is equal to z squared, so z has to equal 1. So now I know this piece of information, I'll be able to help substitute that in. So I'll go back up here to this, this part, and let's plug in what we know. We know x, so 2, times our x, which was 0 0.8, times dx dt, that's what we're trying to find, so we'll leave that alone, plus 2 times our y, which was 0 0.6, times dy dt, which again is negative 60, is equal to 2 times our z, which we found out was 1, times dz dt, which we found out was 20. So we plug in everything that we know. Our goal now is to find that dx dt. We want to get that by itself. So this is 1.6 dx dt plus 2 times 0 0.6 times negative 60. That's going to be a negative 72. And that's equal to 2 times 1 times 20, which is 40. So if I add that 72 to the other side, we get 1.6 dx dt is equal to 112. And then if we divide by 1.6 on both sides, we get that dx dt is equal to 112 divided by 1.6, which is going to be 70 miles per hour. What is this in the context of the problem? dx dt. Here's my x. So the rate at which this line is changing, it's increasing by 70 miles per hour. That means it's getting larger, which makes sense because this car is going that way, which means the x is getting bigger at a rate of 70 miles per hour. So that is the speed of our car, 70 miles per hour. Pretty cool that you can calculate that speed uh, knowing just a little bit of information about this problem. The police officer doesn't necessarily know how fast that speeding car is going, but actually has enough information to calculate that from uh, the scenario. Cool. All right, that is it for our examples. We've got a couple of practice where they give you the equation. Uh, these are just, you know, take the derivative, plug in what you know. In cases where you don't have enough information, don't forget to go back to the original equation to find anything you're missing. And then we've got somewhere you need to draw your scenario and, and do it on your own. Um, this is a really good one to get some practice in. Check your answers, come to class with any questions you've got, and have a great rest of your day.